We've gone over a lot of the different aspects of engineering drawings up to this point. Next, we will consider the advanced aspect of geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, or GD&T for short. These special tolerances are used when the specifications of a particular feature must be more tightly controlled than what standard dimensioning allows for. This increased precision is achieved by means of monitoring unique basic geometric characteristics of parts, such as straightness, flatness, circularity, cylindricity, angularity, parallelism, perpendicularity, runout, profile, and position. These characteristics fall into categories as outlined by this chart. You can see that all of the geometric tolerances fall under five headings, form, profile, orientation, location, and runout. These categories identify what type of geometric tolerance we are dealing with. Additionally, you will notice a final section of the chart titled supplementary symbols. These supplementary symbols allow us to better control and direct the primary tolerances. Next, let's look at how geometric characteristics are applied to a given feature. Feature control frames allow us to group together the necessary information to fully describe the geometric tolerance being used. A feature control frame has four key parts to it, and those are the frame itself, the leader that identifies the feature that the tolerance applies to, the symbol for the geometric characteristic being used, and finally the value that the geometric characteristic is being controlled to. In this video, we're going to consider the four types of form tolerance in a bit more detail. First, let's look at straightness. The straightness tolerance requires that an element along the surface of a part or its axis is straight within a given margin. Straightness is always measured from a view where the element being controlled is represented by a straight line. To see how straightness is measured, let's look at an illustration. So here you can see we have a rectangular shape. All four sides of this shape appear to be straight, as we can see. But as we zoom in, you'll notice that the top edge of this rectangle is actually not straight at all, but is uneven. Here we can see what a straight line on top of the shape would look like. This makes it easy to see that the top is definitely not straight. But how do we know how far from straight it is? Well, that's where measuring straightness comes in. To measure straightness, we create a tolerance zone represented as these two blue lines here. The tolerance zone outlines the upper and lower limits of acceptable deviation from a perfectly straight line. In other words, a six thou straightness tolerance like this one means that the difference between the highest and lowest point of this line must not exceed six thou. As we can see when we zoom in, the entirety of the uneven line is within those boundaries. That means that this line would be considered straight within six thou, meeting the tolerance. The next form tolerance we will look at is flatness. You can think of flatness similarly to straightness, except that instead of applying to just one line along a surface, flatness applies to the entire surface. We can see this illustrated in the following example. You'll notice that initially this looks a lot like our previous example. However, now it's been turned into a 3D model. For a surface to meet a flatness tolerance, it's similar to saying that it must maintain straightness across an entire plane. Instead of the difference between the highest and lowest point being measured across a given line, the difference between the highest and lowest point must be measured across the entire surface, which means that instead of making bounding lines that the deviation must stay within, we must make bounding planes that all deviation must stay within. Next up, we have circularity or roundness. We can think of circularity a lot like straightness. The main difference is that instead of the straightness of a line, 
we are talking about the uniformity of a circumference. In other words, all points along the circumference of a circle must be an equal distance from the center of that circle, within a certain margin, of course. To illustrate, let's look at this example. In this image here, we have four somewhat circular shapes. As the animation begins, we can take note of the differences between them. In the second position here, we have a truly perfect circle. In the first position, we have an oval shape. In the third position, we have an irregular shape. And finally, we have a lobed shape. As we zoom in on each of these and look at our tolerance lines, we can see where the problem arises. In order to be in tolerance, the line of the exterior of each of these shapes must fall within these two bounding tolerance lines, the blue one being the upper tolerance and the orange one being the lower tolerance. As you can see, all of these shapes, except for the perfect circle, do not fall within the conformity for this tolerance. Therefore, none of these would be within the specification for circularity in this case. Finally, let's look at cylindricity. Much like how circularity can be compared to straightness, cylindricity could be compared to flatness. A cylindricity tolerance defines the maximum allowable deviation that all circular lines around the circumference of a given cylinder can have from the common axis of that cylinder. In this way, cylindricity controls the entire curved surface of the cylinder, just like flatness controls the entire flat surface of an object. We can once again see this in action in the following example. As I click play on this animation, you'll notice that in front of us we have what appear to be four cylindrical objects. However, as I begin to rotate the view in 3D space, you'll notice that these are actually the same irregular 2D circles from our previous example, extended into 3D, of course. Now, in just a moment, you're going to see two sets of tolerances brought up on screen. First, you'll see a blue tolerance zone surrounding each of the four cylindrical objects here. The blue tolerance zone represents the maximum allowable size that these cylinders can be in order to still meet the cylindricity tolerance. If any part of any of these cylinders extends outside of the blue tolerance zone, then that would mean it does not meet the cylindricity tolerance as it's too large. Second, you'll see a red tolerance zone. The red tolerance zone re represents the smallest that the cylinder can be to still be within tolerance, which means that if any part of the red tolerance is visible, then the cylinder is too small in that area and would not meet the cylindricity tolerance. So let's now enable these tolerances to see which of these cylindrical objects measure up. Now, as you can see, most of these objects are within the maximum uh, boundary, as shown in blue, except for the irregularly shaped one, which exceeds past it. Secondly, in red, you can see that all three of the irregularly shaped cylinders, the lobed, the oval, and the uh, truly irregular shaped one, have low points below the minimum tolerance zone. Therefore, none of these cylindrical objects, except for the true circular, circular cylindrical one, would meet the cylindricity tolerance.